Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the Titan X hybrid build. We tore it down in the last video, so we took the whole thing apart. That's the PCB, talked about that a bit in the last video. Talked about the cooling solution a little bit too. It's a vapor chamber block with aluminum fins, somewhat standard. No heat pipes in there, but that's because it's using vapor chambers instead. That of course mounts to the PCB. And then we've got this part, the base plate with the VRM blower fan or just blower fan in general, it cools a bit of everything. And that goes of course under uh, everything, but on top of the GPU and the PCB. Ideally, we save this piece for the build, but before getting to the build up process, this content is brought to you by iBuyPower and their new Element Gaming PC, which comes with arc LED fans, red LED underglow, and a tempered glass side panel. So in this video, we're gonna build the thing back up. Hopefully the hybrid cooler that I have, or the liquid cooler I have for the hybrid build, this one here will fit on the base plate. We've had issues with it in the past, particularly with the GTX 1060, which required filing down the base plate, and it was a lot of work. Hopefully this goes smoother. It's basically a 1080 kind of mounting system, 1080 everything. Screws, there's, I wrote it down. How many screws are there? About 63. 53, about 53 or 63 screws, uh, something like that. And so this thing's got the copper protrusion and the cold plate, you've all heard it by now, uh, that ex extrudes out like that or protrudes out. And from there you can just watch our teardown of this particular cooler to learn more about how the impellers are set up and how it works and all of that. We drain the liquid and all of that in the previous video on liquid cooler teardown stuff. So uh, let's build this thing up, starting with the PCB. We got to we got to go backwards a bit from what was done in the previous video. The thermal pad. So we got to go backwards a little bit uh, and rebuild part of the card, but that should be fine. Uh, so this mounts here, pretty straightforward. We're gonna need that cable to be connected to the hybrid. Uh, so that's a bit of a pain because we're gonna be tethered to the hybrid really early in this process. But that cable. And you can see these have this is kind of a splitter, connects into here, and once it's uh, once the blower fan is connected to the pump, we can pretty easily uh, connect both units to the card, so the card can PWM control its fan as needed, and the pump will just blast as as it normally would. Okay, so this needs to come in through up here. Cool. There's about a million screws to do in the back. Before we do that, should probably see if this will fit, what the contact is, all that stuff. Uh, how do we want to do this? Let's get a couple screws on here and then do the rest after the concept is proven. Okay. All right, so that should be enough to support this thing for now. Let's see if this will fit. So, thermal paste pre-applied. I'm going to just, I want to route these out the top because this is a card that will hopefully be actually used after our mod. Uh, the guy who loaned it to us, Sam, is planning on using it in its liquid state, not its original state. Let's see if there's contact there. Okay, you can see that there is actually an imprint. So that imprint's what we're looking for. There's at least partial contact uh, right now. And the contact should be pretty full once it's actually screwed down and, and tensioned. Okay, so the base plate is a little bit taller than the silicon, but this copper protrudes down into the plate anyway. So I think we'll be okay, probably. Let me try that again just to make sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're sliding around on top of the silicon, so that looks like it's applying. Use a shim if, if the temperatures are high, then we'll know. If it's not full contact, we'll use a shim to fill out the rest.
So that's a thing to look out for when doing this stuff, making sure the PCB is straight, if it's actually gonna stay like that for a while. Uh, we don't really care when it's just being built for testing and taken apart, but this will be actually used in theory. So uh, it looks good. Gotta get the back plate on. This, I guess, isn't the ideal order. We, we can look at some of the other stuff first to make sure we're not gonna have to take it all apart again. So now, obviously for this fan to really do something, <laughs> You want it to have uh, have this bit on it so that the airflow is kind of guided. So I think we can get that on there. Well, maybe. We might have to do some modifications, but I think we can maybe get that on there. That would certainly be ideal. Uh, this other part I, is not is not going to happen without making some cuts. Now. For our own project, I would route the, the tubes at the back of the card because it just sits in an open air bench. So what does it really matter that they're going out the back? Now in a case, you obviously can't do that because there's nowhere for it to, to go. Uh, and as I said, this is being given back to someone for use later. So we have to build with that in mind, uh, assuming it works well, that is. Otherwise, it's going back the way it was. Oh, dang, nice. Obviously hitting a cable. I think this will actually fit. I, I don't think that there's any way to get this to fit re reasonably without tearing things apart. Looks like it would be hitting kind of the height limit anyway with this. Even if we took the pump cap off, I think we'd still, well, it might work with the pump cap off. But regardless, you'd have to cut holes in here for these to go through. I don't really want to commit to that. I want to keep this mod as as, uh, as simple as possible. I don't want to actually modify the original card for warranty purposes. It's not my card, things like that. So we're just going to keep it like this for now. And uh, let's, I think this thing can get on there though. So let's, let's get this part of the shroud on there. This is the LED cable again. That'll get plugged in top side. Now I'll just show it to the camera too. Straight down in that that white piece there. So that plugs in there. Uh, can you grab me the electrical tape? Oh. Sweet. So next is these screws. Yeah, that's just not going to work no matter how we, I mean, pff. no, we can't, uh, like we could, we could route the, obviously take this off and run that through here or through there, even before installing it and kind of slot that down and put that on the same time to that for 1060. But the problem is again, we'd have to be cutting metal here. Certainly doable, but uh, let's save that for another time. So for now, we'll leave it like this. Not 100% ideal, uh, but it will work pretty damn well regardless. We're still pulling all of the heat away through the pump, through the cold plate, and this will do a little bit of cooling. It's not going to be as effective because a lot of the... First of all, a few things. This isn't on there anymore. This is what sinks the heat from the VRAM and... or. Uh, uh, yeah, from the, the GPU itself and from the VRAM surrounding components. The base plate sinks the heat for the VRM, which this will cool and is cooling. So that takes care of the VRM. This takes care of the GPU. The only thing not directly cooled anymore by air is the VRAM modules, which line this area. And those are still being cooled by the plate. GDDR5X runs really low uh, voltage compared to some other types of memory that we've seen in the past and that will help reduce thermals. If the memory is not being supremely overclocked, I think we're going to be in good shape. Talk to a few board partners about this as well. They've generally not been concerned about it. So uh, I think we're okay there. Really, it should be fine, especially with the case fans and directional, uh, directional cooling within the case. So uh, what do we have to do now? Well, I guess we can put the back plate on there. 
if you can call it that, a piece of plastic. That'll go like that. Where's the expansion thing? There it is. This goes in there first. So you're getting better th at this. If you see so the, the first ones, these were, uh, I mean, they were a, a real learning process, having never really have done uh, liquid mods like that before. So 1080 was a big thing to, to learn on. Would that work? So if we took this off, I think I think we would actually be clear. Damn, motherfucker. <laughs> I hate these things. We'd definitely be clear without that on it. Um, so then this would go under like that. Tubes would wrap through it. We'd have to just cut like I don't think we'd have to cut this lower one. I think we could just cut like right, right there, up to here, leave the top one uncut, hmm. and cut the bottom one. I don't know if I have tools to do that. I mean, I have a hacksaw. I guess that would work, kind of. Dremel? Let me try calling Bob Stewart. Okay, well, unless Bob calls me back, we will just go back to doing this for now. There needs to be like irrigation channels to get them out if you drop one. These are those little ones that snap in half if you tighten it any, any like at all. As the instant it stops turning from whatever force you're naturally applying, uh, that's when it's time to stop. There's no, it's not like it's really doing a lot structurally. Uh, it's just to hold the thing on and not have any vibration. I probably should have done the other one first. <laughs> but, uh, let's see if it matters. Doesn't matter. Okay, cool. But they will snap at the shaft, and then the head gets stuck in the top part. The rest of the screws get stuck in the, and there's little tiny hex, or, um, yeah, hex keys. So, you just have to be careful with these. Okay, cool. Magnetism is so great. How does it work? Okay, uh, that's mostly everything except for the little these things, which don't really do anything. Dang it, do I really have to put those on before the top thing? Okay, well, we'll test it first. <laughs> See how it performs. Make sure there's contact between the cold plate and the GPU. Once that's known, uh, I'll add these things back on there. That certainly doesn't really need to be on camera. So those will go on in a bit. And <laughs> there's extra screws, obviously, as you can see. It's not because it's IKEA furniture and they've spent spares, by which I mean you forgot to put stuff in. It's because we took stuff off. So uh, that's no longer on there. That may be added if we can figure out a, uh, a good solution. One thought was uh, that a Mr. Andrew had behind the camera was to take our 1080 one of these, cut a hole out here, and then we don't have to damage the Titan X one in case for some reason it would be ideal to leave that in, uh, in unmodified shape for warranty or, or whatever. So that would certainly allow that, but we'll, we'll figure out if there's a good way to cut it and if it makes sense and if it'll fit and all that stuff later. For now, this is the Titan X hybrid. So it is built in theory, there's good contact. We'll find out pretty immediately if there's not. If not, then it gets shut down. We'll take it off and put a uh, put a shim in there. Did that for the 1060 and it worked actually really well. Still way better than air, like miles better than air. Uh, so we'll test this thing. Again, recapping stuff. We've got uh, the EVGA hybrid cooler on here. 
This is just, we have a lot of these. So uh, they work pretty well for GPUs. The best ones I've used for GPUs. Though we're testing the Seahawk, AKA Hydro Graphics right now from MSI and Corsair. That uses an H55. Uh, so I'm curious to see how that performs, but that's another story. So that's on there. Pumps, or tubes rather, go to the uh, radiator tank, of course, and that works as the radiator would work. Got the blower fan still there. Dissipates heat off the base plate, uh, which is just where all the, all the VRAM heat gets synced right here, almost immediately under the blower fan, so that's good, that works. This stuff won't get much airflow from the blower fan. It's fine, I'll put a, a case fan on it, but I, from talking to manufacturers, from our own testing, doesn't really matter anyway. Memory doesn't get that hot, the GDDR5X especially. And it's still under a base plate. And that's still got some kind of dissipation going on. So we're going to test this thing now. Come back for part three to see how it performs thermally. Uh, we'll do the overclocking stuff. So overclocking, gameplay performance, clock rate, stability over time versus temperature, fan RPMs, all that stuff. Should be a pretty fun test. And uh, we'll have that for you shortly. So thank you for watching. As always, Patreon link in the post all video to help us out directly. Links in the description below for more information. Subscribe as always, and I'll see you all next time.